up until October last year, um, as a 40-year-old, I had no real idea that uh, I was donor conceived. Uh, and I'm one of the, the, the many growing numbers now that uh, have found out uh, the family secret through ancestry DNA testing. Uh, so recently uh, my test results came back and uh, it, it really uh, wiped out the, the bloodline that I expected and um, it, it created a, you know, quite a bit of a shock to the system. Um, so that generated some discussions with, with my parents. Uh, you know, it, it, pretty tough at 40 um, to have it sink in. So I approached mum and dad about it and, uh, and said, look, is there anything I need to know? Um, my ancestry DNA has come back and it doesn't include Germany, which uh, I thought <laughs> would include quite a big part of, uh, of my makeup. And they, they, you know, sat down and said, yep, um, we, we had to use a donor, but um, it was also their delivery as well. Up until that conversation, they thought that they told me, um, you know, about three or four years earlier um, in that I was um, assisted, but never donor assisted. So they thought that they'd actually shared that, that secret and that, um, that, that story. So hearing that, um, you know, it, it's such a late stage in life. I really struggled to wrap my head around it. Um, I'd really embraced my German heritage. So I felt that my whole identity had been ripped from me. I took a lot of time to, to really process this and um, felt quite lost for you know, a number of weeks, um, you know, trying to process it, what, what it all meant to me. You know, who am I? Um, can I still claim German heritage and things that I've, I've grown up with for 40 years and, and embraced hand over fist. And um, so it, it did really come as quite a shock. And, um, you know, it, it was through the help of, of Kate over the, over the journey that I was able to, to make sense of it and process it. And, you know, with the conversations with mum and dad, it, it always came down to, you know, they, they never really found the time, didn't quite know how to, to broach the subject with me. Um, even though growing up there were periods of time where I felt that I wasn't quite like the others. Um, and then in hindsight, you start to, you look back with the information that I have now and think, yeah, I was absolutely on the money. And while they could never really find the right moment, I think that they did have some missed opportunities because there were times when I grew up where I'd, I'd ask them whether or not um, I was adopted. And, you know, I think it was a bit of a, almost like a family joke that, you know, when I'd ask it, they'd say, oh, of course you're not, and things like that, where they could hand on heart say, absolutely, you're not adopted. But I think the missed opportunity there was, you're not, however, um, this, is, this is your story. I think one of the things that really impacted most in finding out so late in life is that all of my older cousins were aware of uh, the situation and they had that secret, you know, as their burden as well. Yet I, I grew up and, and interacted with all of them over and over and over again and, and was none the wiser. And I think that was one of the things that I resented the most in that there was, you know, a time and a place that the other cousins and relatives found out, but not for myself. And I really did, um, I felt a lot of resentment to my parents for that, um, in that they, I don't know if it came down to whether they were brave enough um, or they just over time had started to believe that their story was, yep, they're ours um, and you know they're sent home from hospital, everything's done, don't say anything. And it really did, um, you know, start to become their reality over time. And by the time I found out, it, it was, you know, way too late for, for every, you know, for any of that to be caught up on. Um, I think the thing that's really compounded, um, I suppose, my advocacy for getting in early and, and sharing that, that story and how everything happens is, in October, I found out, but I've only recently lost my mum. So six months after finding out, I, I can't even have that conversation to, 
you know, if I've got a question now, and, and sure, you know, Dad's still there, and he's still there for me, and he'll always be Dad, but it, it was, you know, it was always Mum's sort of domain in that she'd always be the one that had that conversation with me, so I feel that I've lost that ability to find out, you know, and, and fill in those pieces of the puzzle um, that, that do keep coming up time and time again, you know, you, you process it and you continue to process it and you have good days or bad days and, um, you know, dad not being a man of, you know, many words, it, you struggle to get that out of him and, and you don't want him to feel without mum there that, um, you know, you don't want him to feel threatened by those conversations as well. So it, it has made life um, very difficult in, in going forward with that and I do, I think, in hindsight, Finding out at 40 was probably better than finding out at 20. However, I would have much preferred to have found out, you know, at 10 or 11 when I started to ask, am I adopted, and noticing those differences. And I think it would have been a lot easier to, to grow up with and and deal with that over the you know a greater period of time and being able to talk to my cousins about it as, as a bit of a peer network and, and things like that. Whereas, um, you know, I felt quite alone um, in October last year while I had all the support from the professionals and, and you know, my family, uh, I'm not as close to those cousins now. Um, so I couldn't have that conversation with them. Uh, and that might have been different if um, if things were different, you know, a, a lot earlier. So uh, I do, I understand and I, I get why they, they had to go down the donor path. But the one thing that, um, yeah, I really, and I think that they do regret it as well, um, as some of the conversations have taken place over time. I, I think they wish that they, if they had their time again, they, they would have had that conversation earlier. Uh, and as do I, it, um, it, it was quite a shock. And and still, you know, almost one year on uh, processing it, going through the, um, the VASA process and the register, um, I've been lucky enough to um, have found my donor and made contact with him, um, but even then, um, it feels like there, are, you know, there's lost opportunities there as well. Um, so trying to make amends there and find out the information and piece that that puzzle together, um, I think may have been a bit easier if it had been on over time. I, I just I almost feel this impending clock over everything now. When I, with everything I do, it's like okay. I need to action this just so I can get that information and, and I'm a curious person. So I'll keep following those leads, but um, it, it is, you know, I, I do feel that there's a lot of pressure to find these answers a lot quicker now as everybody gets older. And um, that's what I have to wrestle with, um, you know, going forward. And uh, I've been able to, you know, talk to Kate quite a lot over this journey and she's been amazing. Uh, I don't quite know how I would have uh, would have done it without her, but um, you know the support is out there. And if you are sitting on the fence, I, I would highly recommend um, having that conversation early. And you know, a lot of the groups that I'm a part of, we, we would all echo that uh, that sentiment. It's um, it, it's one that when it does impact um, the child so much, I think you know everybody that I've spoken to would have much preferred to know. Um, as early as possible and while it's not an easy conversation it, it is one that would be greatly appreciated um, you know through those early years and being able to process that um, as, as the child grows up and that that's really that that's how I've seen it um, I hope that it, it does help somewhat uh, it, it's it, I know these decisions are, are, are life-changing and, and you know it is for the child as well, and that's what you need to to keep focusing on. It's not um, it's not just a one way decision. It, it is it is you know for everybody involved. Um, so I think that might be a question for myself. Um, how do I feel? Um, life would have been changed if I had have known from a young child. I think I might have covered off on that um, in that I probably would have been able to to process it a little bit better with, with the family involved opposed to you know, that secret being held by all and sundry and them feeling that it wasn't their place to tell me even though that I have had 
some cousins say, you know, I really wanted to, but it wasn't my place, and, and I felt that you should know. Um, but then you, you almost feel that there's that pity and uh, that I didn't know now. So trying to deal with that is, is very difficult. Um, it, it is a wide range of emotions. But I think the plus side to this is, well, I did feel I lost my identity with, with that German heritage and, and all of that sort of stuff. This is my story now. And I really enjoy telling that story. It's who I am, um, finding out um, my donor's background and um, and that ancestry there. You know, there's links to, um, I think it's Banks, the botanist that came out to Australia many, many moons ago. So that, that's my path now. And, and while I take so much enjoyment out of that, I wonder how much more I would have got if I had have had more time, you know, up until now you know, over the last 20 years um, to, to find that out sooner.